Well, that's a conversation for another day, guys, because we got to bring in Mary Kay Cabot. Sorry, Divis. We're going to bring in our Hall of Fame yeah. after a quick word from FanDuel. If there was a Hall of Fame for sportsbooks, FanDuel would be a first ballot. Unanimous inductee, no doubt. And you guys have heard us talk about FanDuel before. It's America's number one sportsbook. Right now, they're offering a little something different for everyone. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime you want. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS to download America's number one sports book. <clears throat> and with that, we have Mary Kay Cabot joining the show. Mary Kay, welcome back from Jacksonville. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, guys. How are you doing? Uh, we're good, Mary Kay. Uh, improvement from Deshaun Watson was good to see. Uh, what did you think of his performance? Well, I think he went out there and really showed that uh, that he was going to be able to put this team on his back and carry it to victory and that he wasn't going to let all of the outside stuff get to him. Last week, he was written off as broken and finished. And I think he went out there and showed that reports of his demise were premature. And so I think that was very important. And I think the players really rallied around him. And I thought that showed something. I think they do have his back. Last week, we were showing videos of Joel Batonio supposedly blowing him off and slapping his hand away and people surmising that his teammates didn't like him. I thought his teammates went out and showed that they really wanted to do everything they can to close ranks around him and go out there and help him win. Mary Kay, I want to ask you about the second half of this game. Obviously, the first half, offense and defense was very good. But second half, you know, Jacksonville's offense got going and our defense kind of took a step back and our offense kind of slowed down a little bit. What is it about the second half adjustments? Because I don't think it's just something that we've seen last week. This has been something that's probably been going on for a couple of years now. What do you think it is about halftime adjustments with this coaching staff? Yeah, I think they do have to work on that. I think when you do your after action report, it's something that they're going to have to take a look at because you can't go in the tank in the second half of games. Now, last week, I thought it was the opposite for the defense, where they actually came out and had a much better second half than they did the first half. So I don't necessarily think this is a trend or something that they're going to really have to worry about going forward. On the offensive side of the ball, I think they are definitely in find their identity mode. I don't think they really know exactly who they are yet or what they are. I know, I think they know what they wanted to be, and I think they have to figure out if they can be that. Now, when I look at this offensive game plan, we all know it was vastly different from the week before, but if you had told me that they would win a football game, no David Njoku, and with Amari Cooper catching only three of eight passes for 11 yards, I don't know if I would have put that down in the victory column. I think that was a big issue in this game. I think Deshaun is trying to find completions. He's trying to find his way with some players. And right now, it's been a bit of a struggle. Um, Mary Kay, we, we took a look, and you talked about the struggles with, um, you know, Amari Cooper. You take a look at David Bell. He got hurt a little bit, um, and he looks like he's going to be out for a sustained period of time. Um, can you tell us about um, what's going on with Kadarius Tony? What's, what's the deal with him? Um, did the Browns uh, have any plans for him? Could you? And how, how long will it take, if if he is coming up, um, to see him on the field? Well, he's getting up to speed in the offense. He's getting acclimated to his new team. So I don't know if he's going to be the next man up. They'll call him up in the practice squad or not. Certainly, he should be able to help out on some returns. So that would be helpful. And then I think having his speed on the field mm. is something that's going to be vitally important for them as they move mm. forward. Uh, but just in terms of who else they can look to that's on the field right now for help, Cedric Tillman, I think, is really a place where they can mine for some more completions and some more targets for him. As far as David Bell is concerned, he's out for the season with a dislocated hip. So unfortunately mm. for him, uh, that's not going to go the way they hoped this year. He was targeted <laughs> for a lot more playing time. I think he's someone that could run those choice routes. But for right now, I think they're going to have to look to more Cedric Tillman, more Elijah Moore. And then when David comes back, uh, then they should have pretty much their full complement of offensive skill players. But certainly Deshaun and Amari figure out what's going on between the two of them and get it fixed. 
Mary Kay, I made the point earlier about JOK, uh, how he might be more important to this defense than Miles Garrett, which may sound crazy to some people, but because of the way Jim Schwartz is, is using uh, JOK, the way that he allows them defensively to be um, so multiple, do so many different things. I mean, Miles is, a, I think, a better football player probably overall. Like, he's going to be a Hall of Famer one day. But in terms of the impact, I, I think JOK is – Maybe, maybe the most important piece on the defense. What do you, what's that? Well, he, yeah, he's certainly a very, very important piece on the defense. And I think they're still figuring out all the different things that he can do and the way he can make those big impact plays. I think that uh, you can probably blitz him more. You can probably get him to the point where uh, he can force more turnovers. He can spy on more people. I think there's so much that he can do from a physical standpoint, and he really seems to be hitting his stride as a football player in this scheme. So he certainly is amazing. And with all of these dual threat quarterbacks that they're playing, I think uh, as they go along in the uh, coming weeks that he's going to make even more of an impact, uh, both against the run and also on trying to keep these quarterbacks contained and limited. So I think it's going to be a really good season for him, probably a Pro Bowl season in his own right where he won't even have to just get added as an alternate. Mary Kay, what is the latest on David and Joku? And um, in terms of Nick Chubb, have you heard anything about him being able to go on week five? Well, let's start with David Njoku. I was originally told that he would be out probably at least a couple of weeks. So will he be able to make it back this week? It's hard to say. We watched Trevor Lawrence come back last week, six days later after a very gruesome ankle injury. So guys healed differently and he's not ruled out yet for this weekend. And it will really help Deshaun if he can have David Njoku out there. So we'll see about that. And then as far as Nick Chubb is concerned, really haven't heard anything much. They're just uh, giving things to continue to rehab. Week five might be a little bit soon. I would expect to see him maybe somewhere around midseason. Maybe they'll give him through the bye, let him come back after that. But I think they can get the running game accomplished even without Nick. I think the one-two punch of Jerome and Dante is going to work as they feel their way through it a little bit more. Just to follow up on that, Mary Kay, is that, is that just – are you, you haven't heard anything. You're just kind of speculating. It's just an educated guess on Nick Chubb, or have you, have you heard, heard anything that makes you really specifically believe that he, he won't be ready – week five or six it's really just an, an educated guess okay. you know you just it's such a major major surgery that he had to go through and a revision of a previous major knee reconstruction i think they just don't want to rush it they want to give okay. him the time that he needs so we don't know anything for sure yet um but i would think that somewhere around the midpoint maybe we'll start to see him Mary Kay, I know last week we was getting a little bit closer to Jack and Jed, you know, coming back. Is this the week that we see them? Um, I know I talked to Nathan in the pregame, and he was talking about that, you know, we should look to maybe see them this upcoming week. So what is your thoughts on that? Well, I know they're getting closer. I know they look stronger in practice when we see them uh, going mostly through the individual drills, but you can pick up a lot from those too. And they really look like they are starting to get to the point where they can be out there on the field testing out those surgically repaired knees and i would probably go with jack conklin first and let him come in on certain downs maybe work him a little bit on third down for a while and ease him back in there and see how it goes and if he's ready for a bigger workload then go with it uh, but i think that's probably the way that it's going to go and maybe they will even see him some this week um, you know, what's going on with the, the pitch count, um, so to speak? Of I, This is the first time I heard of it um, uh, from Tyvis. Denzel Ward, maybe a shoulder or something like that. What, what, what was going on with Denzel Ward? Um, and is he um, 100% going into this game, or is it going to be more of a pitch count as well? It will probably be another pitch count for Denzel Ward. He was on the injury report with a shoulder injury last week, but he practiced full go. So we didn't really think to make a big deal out of it. Sometimes they just throw a guy out there on an injury report. And if it's not, if they're not missing practice, you kind of just let it go by the wayside. But for him to only play 11 snaps in this game, I thought that was really significant. He was not on the field when uh, Trevor Lawrence threw that 66 yard bomb to Brian Thomas Jr. You know, that's a play that he's going to get down there and he's going to have a really good chance to break that play up. So uh, I think it was significant that Denzel wasn't able to play very much. 
Maybe he'll be better this week. We'll probably delve into it. We will delve into it more so now that we know that it's a thing. This could be something that he has to deal with for the next few weeks. Mary Kay, the Giants coming to town this week. Uh, we're sort of talking about a little bit there. Uh, everyone thinks the Giants stink, and they, maybe they do. Uh, and they have, I guess, is, is, is probably the best way to put it. Daniel Jones gets this big contract. Everyone again thinks this guy stinks at football, and I mean he's he's not the best quarterback certainly in the in the world, but he but he has not been great. Uh, so I guess with the with that being said, the Browns are about a touchdown point favorite this weekend. Is this a game the Browns should just dominate? I think so. I think the defense is going to have a lot to prove at Cleveland at Huntington Bank Field. Uh, I think they're going to want to go out there and be the dominant defense that we saw there last year, especially against some of the more inferior quarterbacks that they played there last year. So they should be licking their chops for this game. They should be going out and saying, we've got this. I think that uh, you, you'll have some guys that maybe are a little bit healthier this week. Uh, we'll have to see how it's going with Miles with his foot injury. That's also something that you have to keep an eye on. Uh, but certainly Daniel Jones is a quarterback that they should – have an easier time with than they did with, say, a Dak Prescott in the opener. And again, nobody was really ready for that game for whatever reason. And we also heard Bubba Ventrone call out the Browns with lack of effort and not playing hard enough. Well, that's not going to happen. They're going to be ready to play on Sunday at Huntington Bank, and Daniel Jones will probably have to pay the price for it. By the way, the Browns are a six and a half point favorite as of right now. Mary Kay, last thing. Amari Cooper's been a disaster through the first two weeks of the season. A lot of drops. He runs backwards after he had a first down that almost cost them. They had to get a first down on fourth down instead. He just doesn't seem like himself. What, what do you make of it so far? It's really hard to get a grasp on it. And he, we did not talk to him after this game for whatever reason. Uh, just by the time I got into the locker room, he wasn't around. I looked around for him and he wasn't there. Uh, so he might have scooted out of there, you know, one of the earlier guys to be able to leave the locker room. Uh, so we didn't have a chance to ask him about his game. But certainly when we talk to him this week, and we do so every Thursday, he comes to the uh, podium in the locker room. We'll have a chance to ask him kind of what's going on and, ha you know, have the trade rumors gotten inside of his head? Is he okay physically? Um, are he and Deshaun Watson just taking their, you know, time to get their chemistry and timing down a little bit? Uh, it's, it's really hard to say what's going on with him, but he's such an important and key part of this offense that they really need to, him to be on top of his game, and I'm sure he's going to be looking to be that on Sunday. Mary Kay, thank you. We appreciate you taking the time. Good stuff. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. All right, Mary Kay Cab at Cleveland.com. Good to chat with her as always. And, Mike, you got to read before I want to follow up on something she said there? No, you can follow up, then I'll do a read. All right. So... Obviously, we clarified, and she's not reporting this, guys, but, and maybe some of you guys assume this, I don't know, but she said she's not expecting Nick Chubb to come back till the middle of the season. <clears throat> uh, I think a lot of us were hoping he'd be back by week five or six. Oh. No, you didn't think he was, you weren't hoping that? Mm -mm. Listen, I was, people saying, people, people kept telling me, Nick Chubb is determined I said, bro, determination. Your ligaments don't care nothing about your determination. <laughs> that's a, that's a whole nother science. <laughs> that's like no, I, no. I'm determined to win the lottery too, brother. That ain't and yeah. it don't work that way. Everybody hey, wanted it. Because. Look, man, I, I said you get him week back week eight or nine. Like, hey, listen, no one's he's not coming through the door, and nor should we be thinking this way. We need to just tread water to Nick Chubb. No, no you can't. And it's too much he, pressure and expectations to put on the right. young, young man. No. And, and how good is he going to be when he comes Come back? On, I man. mean, even if he, like, maybe next year he'll be he'll be great again for one more season. I don't know, but like. Coming off this injury, you're no not likely to no be No training right camp, away. Yeah, coming off a very significant injury. Right. And then going into a se – like, middle of the year, you jump in there. Yeah. Dude, it's – if if the guy plays half the year and has, has uh, you know, four or 500 yards, I think that's a win. Yes. I think anything from Nick Chubb this year is a, is a bonus. 